So apparently some folks on the right have been thoroughly triggered by the segment we did here on The Readout last week, in which a Yale-trained psychologist counseled those who are distraught about the results of the presidential election and, frankly, frightened over the prospects for their own lives because of it, that they do not owe the people who voted for the very things they're terrified of their time over the holidays. There is a push, I think just a societal norm, that if somebody is your family, that you, they are entitled to your time. And I think the answer is absolutely not. So if you are going to a situation where you have family members, where you have close friends who you know have voted in ways that are against you, like what you said, against your livelihood, and it's completely fine to not be around those people and to tell them why. Cue the people who just two weeks ago were screaming, let's go, Brandon, and cheering as J.D. Vance called Vice President Harris the trash he was going to take out, now yelling, why can't we all come together? Really? I seem to recall that when your guy lost the last election, you didn't come together. Your people stormed the Capitol, smashed in windows and rioted, beat up and nearly killed police officers, and menaced poll workers all over the country. MAGA people issued so many death threats to Ruby Freeman and her daughter, Shea Moss, they had to leave their home in Georgia. But it didn't stop there. Those who spoke out against Donald Trump's attempts to overturn the election got death threats, too. And they were all Republicans. And now that your guy won, suddenly y'all want to come together? Would that be before or after we get over your body, my choice? Look, clearly, Brandon wants to come together. Here he is, kikiing with the guy he was just recently saying was destroying the soul of America. It's a remarkable scene. When Biden beat Donald Trump in 2020, Trump refused to attend his swearing in. But Biden will surely be right there at Trump's. You know, I guess the whole peaceful transition of power thing only works for Republicans when the power is being peacefully transferred to them. And it's not like Donald Trump has changed. His entire campaign was centered on anything but coming together, but rather around insults, threats, weird swaying and Hitler quotes. So please educate me. What would you like us to come together around? You all are the ones claiming that this lady, the sitting vice president of the United States, would have been a DEI hire as president, despite having been a duly elected prosecutor, attorney general of the largest state in the union, a United States senator, and the VP. While you claim this guy is more qualified than she is because he's a man and he played a successful real estate tycoon on a popular TV show? Seriously? Are we meant to come together around his running mate, whose only job prior to 18 months as a senator was working for Peter Thiel, but apparently is not a DEI vice president for some reason that I cannot fathom, a guy who has not once taken back his insults against half the women in this country? We're, we're, we're coming together on sliming women as childless cat ladies now? Really? The four-star general is a DEI hire to you, scared to get on a plane with a black pilot types. But this guy is qualified to be secretary of defense because he was a National Guard captain and co-hosts a popular weekend TV show on Fox. I wonder what makes him not DEI. I'll keep noodling on it. I'm sure it'll come to me. And Trump is hiring a bunch of these underqualified people for really important jobs in his next administration demanding that we all affirm them as perfectly serious candidates so we can all, you know, come together. It is a common feature of authoritarianism and fascism that the nation is called to come together under the autocrat and accept that his incompetent lackeys are our betters. The idea that any random white guy or right-thinking woman with zero background is inherently superior to any black person or woman no matter how many degrees or qualifications they have, is a conceit of fascism and ethno-nationalism that, no, we cannot come together around. We cannot come together around mass deporting millions of immigrants and potentially separating families or throwing them into internment camps. 
We can't come together around kicking women or gay, bi, or trans people out of the military just because macho man weekend TV guy said so. Or around the idea of banning abortion and IVF nationwide and watching more women die from sepsis or more teenagers giving birth to rape babies. We can't come together around Matt Gates, who was accused of trafficking a teenage girl, something he denies being the top law enforcement official in the land and getting to see all the evidence against him, including the identities of his accusers with the freedom to persecute them and prosecute anyone else that Donald Trump tells him to. We cannot come together around banning accurate black history or renaming military bases after Confederate generals. We cannot come together around ignoring the women who accused Trump of sexually harassing or abusing them. We cannot come together around Elon Musk, who runs an app infused with racism and misogyny, and who gamed that app to sway an election, and now essentially co-owns a president alongside Vladimir Putin. We cannot come together around the United States becoming the junior partner to Russia, and the handmaid to letting Bibi Netanyahu and his right-wing religious fanatics destroy what's left of the Palestinian people. Joe Biden is perfectly free to come together with Trump and the people who literally three days ago were calling him every name in the book because he's the president and therefore immune from prosecution by our soon-to-be autocrat under John Roberts' rules for American kings. So he has the privilege of coming together with the guy who quoted Hitler on his way back to the White House. Some of us do not have the privilege to come together around that.